Carlin Armstrong here for MMA News Canada. We're here at the second annual Fight Fan Expo in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada at the Shaw Conference Center. Uh, I have the pleasure of catching up with Ryan Jimmel, uh, newly crowned MFC light heavyweight champion. My man's riding a 14 fight win streak. I want to uh, actually, first of all, throw a, an opportunity to uh, offer my opinion on a, on a name change of the belt, because uh, my man got that strap. So what do you think, belty? That strap? What do you think? How about that strap belty? That strap belty? How about Golden Deliciousness? Golden Deliciousness? I heard someone else offer uh, the Golden Strap on, too. It, hey, that's that's stellar, dude. That's not bad. You know, that sounds know. pretty good. And I actually, know. you were talking about having sex with the belt before he came over. What, no, uh, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. That's, no? No, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Shine that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, in all seriousness, man, and all kidding aside, um, the last interview that we conducted uh, was one of my first interviews. I had a chance to catch up with you at Unified. Yes. Um, you're a class act. You're a great guy. And uh, you're an ambassador to the sport, man. I just want to get some of your thoughts on the upcoming fight in Ontario. When we first conducted that first interview, um, Emmanuel Newton was a guy that uh, we were looking at as a potential matchup. Yep. You called him out, uh, giving him a rematch, a shot at the title. And there's uh, been some rumors floating around that maybe he may not be able to compete in Ontario. Can you speculate on that for us? Yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, we, the fight was signed and, and, and ready to go. And uh, I think Emmanuel, he uh, sustained a minor injury in the last week or so. So we're going to know tomorrow for sure if it, it is going to be Emmanuel. But uh, if not, with you know we've got a couple of uh, replacements, so I'll definitely be fighting on the on the Windsor card. Okay, that's yeah. cool, man. Because yeah. I was I'm really looking forward to that one. I'm going to be down there, and uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the action, man. So I was I was hoping that they'd have a replacement for you just in case things went sour. Yeah. Um, with uh, with the biggest stage of them all being in Ontario uh, coming up, yeah. what do you think it means for MFC to be diving into new waters in Ontario? Uh, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for growth. It's a great opportunity to to expand. Uh, the MFC brand to a, to a bigger audience and uh, to show them what they have, you know, and uh, just give them the best show they can and uh, make more people MFC fans, you know, come to a live show and see it not just on TV, see it live and see the entertainment factor in the real uh, in real flesh. Well, absolutely, it's and it's a big opportunity for uh, for MFC, obviously getting into the Ontario market. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Mark's going to be here today. I wanted to actually get a chance to catch up with him and maybe uh, pick his brain a little bit too about uh, maybe testing the waters and say Montreal or Vancouver. Yeah. I, uh, I I obviously don't have the chance to meet up with him if he's not here. But he's, do you know uh, he, anything? He, he's in Windsor right now, and uh, I was just I was talking to him to the, on, with him on the phone, and he says uh, you know there's going to be definitely an expansion going out out into other other waters, you know. Uh, Getting into uh, a bigger, bigger venues and and, and, and and a wider audience to to expand that brand. Okay. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're not the guy to start picking the brains about some of the uh, some of the managerial uh, opportunities with MFC right now. But uh, let me get your thoughts, man, on on what it means to the the landscape of mixed martial arts to have uh, Zufa purchase Strikeforce and tell me what you think that how that shakes up the landscape. Okay. Well, I, I think it's uh, it's very good for Zufa. They're going to make a lot of money. I mean, that's obvious. Um, but I think it's a, a, it's good for the fans. But I think it, it puts the fighters at um, a compromised position. You know, where there's one big monopolized company, um, they're going to get treated worse, and they can they can treat them worse. I think uh, it's in their power to. It doesn't mean they're going to for sure, but it's in their power to say we're going to give you less pay and cut guys faster. I think it's going to make more of a volatile work environment for the fighters. And on the on the on the sponsorship side of things, um, I think the sponsorship is the same thing. UFC, they have to, there's only a couple sponsors in UFC, and if you don't want to accept five hundred dollars when you're worth more, they can say, hey, we don't care, we don't need a sponsor, you're someone else. So it, it puts the fighters, since we don't have uh, a union or a representation, it puts it at a, at a compromised position. And already fighters are the ones that are giving their blood, sweat, and tears, and uh, everyone else is kind of milking the gravy off 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 our hard work for the most part you know absolutely yeah. man and you're very educated on the sport you're, you're a very intelligent fighter uh, you're a very intelligent guy you just put a whooping on my, on my ass in the chessboard <laughs> so I'm gonna come back for a rematch for that you know I'm not I going nowhere without a challenge I know I know um, uh, you know I, I didn't get much sleep last night but yeah. uh, what do you think then that this means like you t you kind of touched on the sponsorship do you have any sponsors you want to shout out right now really quick I do uh, good for you uh, they, they, my, for the last fight, they, they, uh, we did a documentary and they followed me around and kind of, 
uh, filmed like what it's really like to be a fighter. So I, I, I found they're, they're a great sponsor. They help support me and uh, uh, X Factor. Uh, my friend Jim, I mean, he just helped me in the, the, the worst times. And, and um, fighters need that sometimes, you know. Sometimes, you know, you want to accomplish a dream, but sometimes maybe you don't have the means. And, and people like my friend Jim, he gave me the means to, to move on to the next stage and uh, help me out. So, um, yeah, Full Tilt Poker has always been very supportive of me, as well as Lean FX. What, uh, any coaches, any uh, any specific friends or family members you want to get in there too, man? Um, a little plug and play, man. It's always good, All right, right? plug and play. Uh, Frank Lees, it's like a second home to me, you yeah. know. Um, the stand-up is awesome. Frank's a, a legend, you know, and, and there's great other great instructors there, Kedro and Billy. Uh, Hayabusa, it's been great training there, you know. Just a good group of friends. And uh, wrestling at the university as well as Athletes Nation. And I love my mom. And uh, he loves his mom. Hi, Tanya. I love you too. You're a great man. Um, you're a class act, man. I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Um, it's always a pleasure. Let's uh, let's try and catch up maybe uh, in the next couple of days, and uh, once things get ironed out, and we, okay. we can find out what happens with your opponent. Absolutely. And uh, I'm really looking forward to your matchup, whoever it might be in Ontario, man. And I'm looking forward to another uh, rematch in chess. I'm going to beat you again. Don't worry. Gotta... <laughs> there you have it, man. Ryan Jimmel, light heavyweight champion. Riding a 14-fight win streak, MMA News Canada, Carlin Armstrong. We got it all, baby. Watch out for his fight. April 8th in Windsor, Ontario. Ontario. Opponent, maybe a speculation on some change, but we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Cheers, man. Thank you, man.